Good evening, everybody, to the latest council meeting of the 23rd of January. Um, may I invite members to join in our opening prayer? Almighty God, the source of knowledge and understanding, guide the minds of those of us who are about to take counsel together on matters concerning this county, that in our debate and in our decisions, we may faithfully discharge our duties of office and promote the health, safety and well-being of those we seek to serve. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Fellow councillors, officers and members of the public who are listening in via the Zoom webcast, welcome to our council meeting this evening. Um, before we get to the agenda proper, I'd like to remind members to please ensure their microphone is switched on when speaking for the benefit of the webcast and the recording, and then you switch it off afterwards. Thank you. Now to the agenda proper. Um, apologies, Tom, have we any apologies this evening? Chair, we have apologies this evening from councillors Blanksby, Gordon Brown, Dale, Wilson and Webb. Therefore, councillors voting to 22 this evening. Thank you. Chairman's announcements. Since the last meeting, um, the chair and the vice chair have attended a number of civic engagements. They've been circulated. It's quite a long list, um, so I won't read them out individually, but you have all had those in advance. Agenda item three, announcements from the leader, members of the cabinet or head of paid service. I understand we have a couple of announcements from portfolio holders. And um, so hand over to Councillor Stevenson first. Thank you very much, Chair. Just two from me. Um, we are all aware of the brilliant news regarding the success of our levelling up fund bid. Our three projects will support our future Rutland work and delivery of our corporate plan, focusing on transport, culture and economic growth. I'm sure members will be keen to know what the next steps will be. Officers will now work with the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, not least to revisit the risk profile for each project, taking account of our current economic climate. Um, secondly, on the subject of lobbying, the Under Secretary of State for Local Government and Building Safety, Lee Rowley, visited RCC last Thursday. He met with the CEO and S151 officer, and then with Councillor Payne, our MP and me. We took the opportunity to not just highlight the obvious and well-documented challenges that face local government across the board, Rutland's particular challenges resulting from unfair funding and the impact of that, but also to highlight our successes, notably with adult social care and our highways, despite our diminutive size. It was a pleasure to highlight Rutland's MO of creativity and innovation driven by identified desired outcomes for our residents. It is fair to say Lee was impressed with the measures Rutland has taken to ensure our future with our financial sustainability strategy and the future Rutland conversation and resulting vision. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Um, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Chair. Um, two announcements from my portfolio as well. The first on the five-year housing land supply. Um, as you'll probably be aware, last week we published the five-year housing land supply, which now stands at six years, which has risen from 4.6 years in September. This is great news for our residents in terms of Rutland's current ability con to control future development while the new local plan is being prepared. And as members are well aware, since the withdrawal of the local plan, this has been of great concern to our residents. It has meant that planning applications have had to be tilted in favour of developments in line with the national planning policy framework. Um, this has been one of the priorities since I took over the portfolio in May, and a number of steps have been taken since that date, including approving the interim position on housing development. We prioritise reducing the time between planning approval and when sites can be included in the supply figures and reviewing the calculation of housing supply in detail, including the allowances for windfall sites. Um, we do need to maintain our five-year supply, but this does mean that we have a stronger case to resist uh, applications for inappropriate sites, which is good news for Rutland, as I said, we developed the local plan. The second announcement was public transport. We held a well-attended bus users forum last Thursday, and I would like to publicly thank all those who attended and submitted questions. Feedback on our services from passengers is vital, and all questions and answers, there are about 40, I think, in total, will be published on the um, Rutland County Council website shortly. And we know from the future Rutland conversation how important local transport services are, 
which are reflected in our priorities for our future Rutland vision and corporate plan. And we also know how challenging operating a rural bus network is, but we are determined to provide the best service we can. And therefore it was particularly pleasing as the leaders said that on the same day as the bus users forum, the announcement was made on the success of the leveling up bid, which includes investment in transport hub and in demand responsive transport, making it easier for people to travel around and improve connections both within and outside the county, giving us a real opportunity to further develop Rutland's public transport services. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, Councillor Payne. Thank you, Chair. I'm sure all councillors are aware, but I just wanted to um, reiterate the fact the draft budget has gone to consultation. Uh, the consultation ends on the 3rd of February. We have scrutiny this Thursday, the 26th of January, um, and then the full budget goes to Cabinet on Tuesday, the 14th of Feb, and then to Council on the 27th of Feb. Um, we've also held, um, we're, we're holding a couple of Q&A sessions for, for members of the public. We had one in Uppingham last Thursday, which went very well, um, I'm pleased to say. Uh, we do another one in Oakham this um, Monday the 30th, 10 till 12, and then one in Ketton on the 7th of February as well. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, Councillor Oxley. Thank you, Chair. I've got a, a number of announcements. Um, I'd like to echo the leader's comments with regards to the announcement that we were successful in our bid for the LUF funding. We were very fortunate to have had two recent discoveries locally of sites of national importance both of which will need investment to maximise the potential of them as a visitor attraction. The knock-on effect being the chance to invest in the museum, which will place it very much at the heart of the cultural offer for the whole county. And whilst we are waiting for DEFRA to confirm the figures, this is another announcement, indications show that our recycling figures are down to 51.8 compared to the previous quarter of 57.8. And this can be attributed to the very dry summer which led to a significant reduction in green waste, a factor which is being experienced by a number of other local authorities at this time. Plus, there's been higher levels of residual waste due to an additional calendar week in June, which also coincided with the extended bank holiday weekend and Jubilee celebrations. With food waste still having a significant part to play in our waste tonnages, a campaign to encourage residents to put less food waste in their black bins was undertaken over the Christmas period. And we're waiting to see if that has been successful. And press releases in the local media, combined with links from the RCC website to the Love Food Hate Waste site, hopefully helped people in that context. New legislation means that from Sunday, the 1st of January, 2023, Rutland County Council is asking all residents to ensure that waste upholstered domestic seating is not brought to a local waste and recycling centre as part of a mixed load, if at all possible, as this may result in the whole load having to be incinerated, including any recyclables. All domestic upholstered domestic seating taken to Rutland's household waste and recycling centres is already sent to an energy from waste facility to provide heat and power for homes and businesses. The new law requires all councils incinerate all upholstered domestic seating being disposed of as waste including anything that was brought to the HWRC with the seating. The law has been introduced across the country after the Environment Agency raised concerns about high levels of fire retardant POPs, persistent organic pollutants in seating textiles and foams. And the Environment Agency warns that POPs remain intact in the environment for long periods and if not disposed of properly become widely distributed geographically. Upholstered domestic seating includes sofas, sofa beds, armchairs, kitchen and dining room chairs, futons, bean bags, and cushions, which have any type of fabric or foam. And the POPs were used as flame retardants up until 2019. And finally, Rutland County Council is asking residents not to dispose of their used household batteries in recycling or general waste bins due to a risk of fire. Batteries thrown away in the general rubbish or mixed with recyclable materials like card, metals, and plastics can be dangerous. When waste and recycling is emptied into the back of the collection vehicles, batteries can be squashed, compacted, punctured, shredded, or soaked in liquids. And when this happens, batteries can get very hot, resulting in fires that put lives at risk and cause damage to equipment and vehicles, 
as was seen recently at a fire in Melton Mowbray. And it's, this also disrupts the collection and processing of materials. So Rutland residents are being asked to dispose of all batteries using the battery collection points at Cotsmoor and North Luffin and recycling centres. Alternatively, they, they can drop off old batteries at shops and supermarkets, which sell them. They all have collecting uh, containers. Finally, the Environmental Services Association give further details about the dangers of batteries and lists all the places in Rutland where they can be recycled safely. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I don't believe we have any more announcements. Uh, Councillor Harvey. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was pleased to represent the Council in my role as co-chair of the LLR Integrated Care Partnership at the National Integrated Care System Network Conference in London. I was one of only two local authority leads there, and it was an interesting day involving workshops on a diverse range of topics. Learning from the day was introduced to the last LLR Health and Wellbeing Partnership meeting. The special meeting of Rutland Health and Wellbeing Board in December looked at the draft integrated partnership strategy and our comments have been fed back. The cost of living crisis and the cold weather snap gave me the opportunity for local radio interviews and it was great to share details of how we are helping residents and also highlight the good work of our officers. I'm pleased that the refreshed joint LLR carer strategy has been launched and that Cabinet have approved the procurement process for the new sexual health service. Looking forward, we have a busy agenda at Health and Wellbeing Board tomorrow. The JSNA chapter on oral needs is being presented and I'd encourage members to have a read. And I finish on positive news. I'm pleased that the renovation works at Rutland Memorial Hospital are drawing to a close and that Rutland Ward is due to open in mid-February. Thank you. Thank you. Um, agenda item four. Um, do we have any declarations of interest this evening? I see none. Um, item five, minutes of the previous meeting to confirm the minutes of the meeting of Rutland County Council held on the 7th of November 2022. Can I have a proposer? Um, Councillor Stevenson and a seconder. Councillor Oxley, thank you. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. Um, all those against? And any abstentions? Thank you. Agenda item six, petitions, deputations and questions from members of the public. Um, there are no petitions, deputations or questions that I've been made aware of. Is that correct, Tom? Thank you. Questions from members of council. I believe there are none. Um, referral of committee decisions to the council. None. Thank you. Um, calling decisions from cabinet meeting during the period from 7th of November to the 23rd of November. None received, Chair. Thank you. Um, item 10, reports from cabinet i do not believe there are any thank you um item 11 reports from committees of the council i believe there are none um 12 reports from scrutiny i believe there are none item 13 joint arrangement and external um, organizations i'll take each report as received um as we just go round the table in the usual fashion Anybody would like to, any hands up? Councillor, oh, sorry, Councillor Ball, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just uh, a few words on the fire authority. Uh, members will have had my sort of end of year report as promised prior to Christmas. Um, but um, as we know, we are now looking at budgets uh, in line with every council and every fire authority in the country. Uh, this is really only a heads up because our meetings start. I chair the finance committee in a couple of weeks. and uh, But there has been an early indication uh, from the powers on high that uh, authorities such as the CFA, such as um, Leicestershire and Rutland, etc., we will be allowed if we deem, if we so wish, to add another straight five pounds uh, to the preset this year. Um, that is recognizing that once again, um, our authority is one of the most efficient in the country, but also one of the lowest, which has a precept. Um, now, I have to say, this has to go before the whole committee, will be discussed and will be voted on. So it may or may not happen. 
if it does go through, of course, it band D, it actually comes out at 7%. And this is one of these occasions where you say, oh, 7% is high, it's where percentages belie the actual figure, because it will only add just over 10p, basically, to the band D, and it will add just over three pounds a year at band A. So that's an early heads up of what might happen. Um, I have to say we have a super authority and uh, that five pounds, if it is approved, will be well spent as usual. But heads up at this stage, more to report at a future council meeting. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, Councillor Payne. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, at the end of November, I attended two meetings uh, with Hanson Cement um, as a member of the Hanson Cement Liaison Committee, a quarry restoration visit, and the um, points to note are the restoration of disused area of the quarry is impressive, to be honest. The original stored topsoil has been returned to site, pasture land and, wood, and a woodland belt is being created, they're just waiting for better weather to plant 24,000 trees in this area. In the second area, the preparation for the creation of cal calcareous grassland and woodland starts in the spring with a view to grass seeding in spring 24 and further tree planting in winter 2024. Um, to note that current quarry reserves are less than 10 years now and Hanson are looking to extend their quarry working. A scoping request is being submitted to our planning department this month if it hasn't been received already. This will provide an outline of what Hanson wants to do and where, plus its impact on the environment and mitigating factors. They continue to carry out surveys into ecology, amphibians, reptiles, bats, badgers, bird life, etc. Groundwater monitoring, noise and air quality and archaeology. An archaeological and geophysical survey of one of the fields towards the outskirts of, the outskirts of Ketton uh, to the west of Empingham Road has revealed a small Iron Age or Roman enclosure and ditches. Um, Leicestershire County archaeologists are organising trial trenching and recording of finds here. Um, Hanson will be holding a public exhibition of their proposed extensions in late spring summer this year. Uh, currently, the quarry is shut for its annual maintenance program and will be open at the end of this month. Um, in the liaison meeting, all the emission levels were uh, seen to be well below permitted toler tolerances. There have been two noise complaints, only one in August and one in November, which, which is very good. Hansen is still monitoring these and looking for sources of the noise, which may emanate from a conveyor belt. Later this year, Ketton will be piloting a new carbon capture plant, which will target capture of 50 kilograms of CO2 per day. This will need a variation to their environmental agency permit, um, which they have actually applied for. Improvement, more improvements have been made. They've recently installed a new fueling station and tanks, and also the cement bowline has been improved to prevent leaks. One negative, though, Hansen have recently experienced vandalism to their railway track and several arrests have been made, which is positive. However, Hansen have installed steel post fencing along the track, which creates an eyesore as you approach the village from Stamford, and it's causing issues to motorists at night with flicker from headlights. This has been raised with Hansen, and I'm cur currently pursuing this through highways and planning. Otherwise, both meetings I attended were good, positive experiences. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I presume there's no more reports if you're on the table. No, thank you. Um, item 14, notices of motion. Thank you, Tom. Item 15, the report of the Welland Partnership Remuneration Panel. Um, members will note an updated Appendix T2 has been circulated via an agenda supplement. Um, Councillor Stevenson, please, would you like to introduce the report? Brilliant. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, before I present the paper proper, I want to make one small observation. MPs do not have to vote on their scheme of allowances. IPSA does the job for them. I therefore feel somewhat sorry for us 
we have the unenviable task of determining the level of remuneration we should receive, vulnerable to public comment about our value, which we would be impressively thick-skinned to ignore. I shall now properly present the paper chair. Um, firstly, I would like to extend my thanks to the Welland Partnership for their time and effort preparing and producing the report you have before you, not least because we chose to ignore the recommendations from their last report. I would also like to thank those of us who found time in busy schedules to meet with the panel to share our views. It is clear from the report and the appendices, the gap between the allowances and other authorities and Rutland is vast. As is also noted in the report, this gap has arisen due to an understandable and a well-intentioned desire on the part of members to demonstrate solidarity with our residents in times of financial hardship. It is the view of the panel, and indeed mine, that whilst allowances should be neither deterrent nor incentive to people standing for office, they are now indeed a deterrent. When a person considers whether to stand for election, fiscal affordability should not be a consideration. Our allowance scheme must support equality of opportunity. If we continue on the current trajectory, serving on this council, particularly when considering positions on the executive, will only be doable for those of independent financial means, whether resulting from pensions or personal wealth. This, in my opinion, is wrong. It is also important to note that as highlighted in the agenda supplement at 2.4 A and B, no member has to accept their allowance, nor indeed put in for any expenses, as is also highlighted in the covering report at 6.3. The recommendations ask us to acknowledge the gap and approve the index linking to ensure the gap no, gets no bigger. You will also note that whilst the remuneration panel advised increases in the basic allowance, our officers have recommended this be a decision for the new council to take after the May elections, something I wholeheartedly support. This decision should be made rationally. The forthcoming elections add an emotional nuance that has the potential to cloud good decision making. Finally, there's been some discussion amongst members regarding the scheme of allowances and what members can claim expenses for. Whilst this sits outside the statutory remit of the remuneration panel, a council can ask specifically for this to be considered, which Rutland did. The panel's observations are noted at 5.5 in their report. Um, Councillor Waller, ahead of the meeting, has a suggestion for an amendment to recommendation, recommendation two, which would offer an opportunity to consider expenses after the May elections. I'm happy to accept this now, and I believe Councillor Payne, who will be seconding this motion, is too. Excellent. Um, Councillor Waller, would you like to read out your amendment? Thank you very much, Leader. My amendment is this. To recommendation two, add and to consider members' expenses, including travel expenses for ward related work, as part of its considerations on closing the gap. So basically, it's asking that the whomever of the members, whether it's the um, a uh, constitution committee or a working group of members are looking at allowances post May that they specifically look at um, the travel expenses and indeed other members' expenses. Because when we look at the um, examples that were given to us in our report tonight, different councils operate a, a whole range of different ways of doing things, incorporating expenses into the basic allowance. Uh, not giving it at all, not giving any at all, and, and so on. And, and so I thought this way we could make it clear to members post May that there is a genuine discussion to have because there are genuine options. And I'd like to thank the leader and Councillor Payne for accepting my amendment. Thank you. Um, yep. Yeah, so that, so I mean, basically, I've introduced the report. Clearly, we've, we've had various supplements. I'm very happy to propose the recommendations and Councillor Payne. Sorry, I'm taking over your job, Chair. There we go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You've done my job for me. Very, very kind. So Councillor Stevenson proposing, Councillor Payne 
is seconding. Um, I can now open it up to the floor for debate. Who would like to? Um, Councillor Hemsley. Thank you very much, Chair. I, I understand the complexity of uh, awarding ourselves uh, an amount of money for doing a service. I, I just fear that yet again, we're kicking it down the road into next year when we have many new people, maybe there are maybe a third of us left. And, you know, is that the right thing? Do they have any idea what they're doing? And is it actually something we should grasp now and look at? But obviously, you know, the decision and the instruction is to put it into next year. I hate kicking these things down the road. and I don't think we're doing anybody any favours. Thank you. Anybody? Uh, uh, Councillor Waters. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Could I first thank officers for their subtle wording when they talk about the variability of the requirement to pay national insurance? I think that's a very subtle way of saying we have an ageing kind of councillor membership. Uh, for the young ones among you, you won't pay national insurance once you're retired. Uh, the wind has been taken out of my sails slightly by the amendment. I thought the amendment might be to take effect from this April. I do have concerns that attending a parish council meeting and talking on behalf of the council when actually an individual councillor does not have that right could be complicated. However, as it has been amended in the way that it has, I will support it, Chairman. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? Councillor Waller. Thank you very much, um, Chairman. This is a difficult one. It's always difficult for us. For many, many years, um, we had the remuneration panel come along and we decided to not accept their recommendations. Um, but as uh, Councillor Stevenson's pointed out, if our allowances aren't of a sufficient level, it will be a disincentive for some people because if we are going to do this job diligently, as we all know, it's not something you can do one evening a week. It just doesn't work that way. And um, But of course, against that, we're balancing um, the fact that uh, you know, we're in the cost of living crisis at the moment. Um, and we also have to recognize there aren't that many of us in this council chamber compared with many. And so we're doing more jobs and that, includes the cabinet who are carrying more than one portfolio in in many cases um, as well as those of us who are active in on the scrutiny side for example um, there is there's no no way we can win this whatever we do whether we do it now or whether we do it post may at least the advantage of delaying the discussion till after may is that the council can set up a working group or use the Constitution Committee to actually take time to look at the variety of options, whether um, whether indeed they want to close the gap, if they do, whether, whether they want to do it in a phased basis or a one-off hit. I mean, there are all sorts of options there, but it's the time that you get post May. And that's why I'm supporting it. Although I've got a lot of sympathy with Councillor Hemsley's view, um, we haven't got the time now to put in uh, to come up with what will be a well thought through and well reasoned decision. So that's why I'm supporting the as amended recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Any, um, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I suppose it will be third time lucky after May. Um, it will be remiss of me not to remind us that it was this very, it was us sitting around this table that actually uh, rejected the index linking not seven or eight months ago. Um, it's also worth adding that members around this table took to publicly um, slating members in public over their views. And um, I did find that behavior rather appalling. Um, nobody sitting around this table should ever judge people on their financial situation, which is exactly what happened last time. Um, I found it very disconcerting. Um, I hope moving forward, we learn from that and that actually people aren't shamed in the fact that some of some people have to claim 
their allowance and actually it's a fundamental part of their income. Um, and I think that needs to be remembered. There are some very lucky members around this table who don't need their allowance. And as Councillor Stevenson has said, you don't need to take it or you can donate it to charity. And that's perfectly great. But I would say we are currently preventing people from standing as councillors. And that I think is shocking. So I think hopefully we will learn as a membership moving forward and there won't be repercussions of what happened seven months ago. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Councillor Oxley, then Councillor Box. Right. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, as one of the longest serving members on this council, I well remember um, many, many years ago arguing that it should be index linked, and uh, the council refused to accept that recommendation. Um, and since then, as I say, we have been trailing behind neighbouring authorities. and. It has, in, in my opinion, we have to try and encourage uh, people from all walks of life to come and uh, stand for election. Um, we need young women and men who may be very well in full-time employment and who have um, uh, employers who are, can't allow them the time that it needs to become, uh, uh, to give everything to, to the role of being an elected member. So we have to do what we can to compensate people, in my opinion, if they're having to give up uh, paid employment in order to attend the, the, the duties um, that they have as an elected member. So, and whilst it is it's difficult at, at this particular moment in time, because of the fact we are in the middle of um, a cost of living crisis, um, and we are also just about to go into uh, an election, so there will be a new cohort of, of councillors, many of whom hopefully are sitting in this room today, but there will be others, and we have to give them the chance to do the best that they can for the people of Rutland, um, irrespective of how much it costs them. So I do support the fact that we should be paying a realistic figure uh, in allowances, and I also support the fact that we should wait until the new cohort to give them the opportunity to debate it rather than us. But that at least those who are standing for election will have the chance uh, and the, the thought that there could very well be the opportunity for them to contribute to that debate. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fox. Um, I agree with Councillor Hemsley. Um, I'm very disappointed that we are kicking the can down the road again. Um, I think by doing this, we are actually hampering people possibly standing in May. Thank you. Um, Councillor Baines. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, I was first elected to this council the year 96-97. I wouldn't say that I had an induction, um, but I was carefully taken aside and told the difference between allowances and expenses. And I did specifically ask about travel um, within the ward and was told that was covered by allowances but if you were coming to a council meeting um, to which you were summoned rather than invited or, or if you were serving on a committee to which you've been elected you could reasonably claim travel expenses from home to campus. I followed that as far as I know that hasn't altered now, if it has altered, and if there has been advice given to individual members, it certainly hasn't been um, advanced to all members. And I would expect there to be some sort of evidence um, from officers, some sort of audit trail, if that advice has been given. If it hasn't been given, presumably no one has claimed for um, any um, travel within the ward, um, whether it's parish or certainly in um, our case, we quite often travel out to see parish council chairman um, and certainly don't claim um, on, on that or indeed um, to any of the electors. So if there has been an alteration, I would like evidence of it, an audit trail. May I say that I do support 
um, the suggestion uh, that it is considered um, after the next AGM. I think it is appropriate um, that the, the then members, um, the leader has already referred to how embarrassing it is in many ways, but we haven't actually followed the recommendation of the independent bodies and made quite clear uh, when I gave my second uh, evidence um, to the same same panel members. So I would certainly support um, the uh, amendment that Councillor Waller had put forward, as well as the um, broad proposition um, in front of us. Um, but I would also like to say that in the past, we have had members' expenses claims published. And I would like to see those expenses claims published for the current um, uh, cycle. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Dan, did you want to respond to any of those points? Thank you, Chair. Uh, so taking them each in turn, um, in response to your first point, Councillor Baines, there hasn't been a change in, in the position. So there has been no alteration from the um, circumstances you describe. Um, and on your second point, members' um, allowances and expenses are published every year at the end of the financial year. They're available on the website. Thank you for that, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Do we have any further, further questions? Councillor Cross, fingers crossed. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Members worry about younger people coming in and serving as councillors and the fact that the remuneration is not enough. I th think it's nothing to do with remuneration. It is the fact that our young people have to work so hard in their current jobs to keep their jobs that they dare not take time off to serve on this council. And I think that is a very, very sad indictment of the current way in which people are expected to live and exist. We have great problems with voluntary organisations, with getting volunteers and young ones. And the Agricultural Society has also suffered from that as well, to my knowledge. And so I don't think we should worry too much about our allowances, but I would be most interested to learn from the sessions that have been carried out to give prospective councillors some insight as to whether those that attended actually asked about remuneration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark, you wrote those sessions. Do you know the answer to that question? Was remuneration mentioned? Uh, it, it wasn't asked because it was on our slides in terms of the remuneration that people had. Thank you. Do we have any further further questions? No. Um, are we happy? I think we'll take the four recommendations on on block unless there is a anyone has a concern with those. Um, we have four recommendations. Um, all those in favour, please raise your hand. I believe that is 18 at the moment, Chair. Thank you. Um, against? Three. And any abstentions? It was yourself, Chair. Oh, sorry, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I better abstain then since I was last. Um, um, sorry, Tom. Um, in that case, I believe the motion is recommendations are carried. Thank you. Um, item 16, um, any urgent business? I am not mean away, made aware of any. Um, and the date of the next meeting has already been advised as a special meeting on the 21st of February 2023. So if there's nothing else, that concludes the business for this meeting. Thank you, members, to those listening in. I declare the meeting closed at precisely 7.40. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.